Okay, so this is going to be another example of using Python to get and read data from a PLC. So this is be uh, in this environment we'll be using a PLC Studio 5000 uh, version 31 um, or version 32 to be matter of fact. And I just want to show you where to actually get this stuff. So first you visit GitHub and uh, you visit GitHub or either Google uh, Pi Logics and then you can come to this page right it's generally pretty easily found on google what i did is i downloaded the actual zip file because i upload i did everything offline now if you do have an internet connection you can just connect your visual studio to your actual um you know to this actual page and use the github file right here right so you that's very easy to do now i'm on a virtual so i'm showing you this now i'm going to actually go online with my processor and go ahead and get this stuff online and as, as we're doing that I'll show you what I did is I got I loaded all the examples on this so that we actually have everything and that that actual path is going to be C drive users um, in my case it's admin you want to go to app data so to find app data you're gonna to have to open up your actual uh, folder or your folder properties and then open up the hidden files and then you go to local program and then Python Python uh, 3.9 then le the library and then site packages and then look up uh, PyLogix and then examples so uh, again if I back this up a little bit it's going to show me right here where I, I installed my examples all I did was copy them into this file so you can see them Okay, so now that we're online, we're going to come in and see a couple things. Uh, let's come in here and we're going to get a couple like tags just like this. But first, let's open up one of these, uh, this this GUI right here. I think this is uh, one one to start with, uh, which is really, really a cool thing. So we're going to open this up with uh, the natural Python. All right, we can open it up with the ID, whatever you want to. But uh, again, um, we'll open it up with Python just to see it and have it run. So this is the GUI, the way it looks. Uh, again, now you can actually sample that project <coughs> and you can open this up with Studio um, or with Visual Studio and see the way it looks in that, right? So this is gonna be a, an instance of, so what I like to do too is make my own copy. So I'll come in here and just copy all this stuff and let, let this give this time a, a second to load and what we'll do is we're going to actually come in and, and copy this so we're going to we'll control I'm going to control A and control C as soon as this thing gets loaded it does take it a little bit to get loaded so control A control C we'll open up another instance like a brand new uh, project and that way we have this under a new project we can name it and we're going to name this uh, PyLogix GUI, right? So we'll come in here and we want to pick Python is our, our path. So languages, we can come down here. Let's just do languages. Uh, let's see. As soon as the drop down decides to work, we'll do Python is our language. Come over here, pick Python, and click next. And then we're going to call this uh, PyLogix GUI real simple alright so uh, apologies GUI because the name is the directory already is so uh, directory okay apologies uh, and then we'll say GUI example I should not have that in my should not have that already done so create this one and then, like I said, we're going to copy and paste it just so we have it in a, a separate project. We can pull that up any given time we want to. So we're just going to paste this in here. Now, I want you to see a couple things you can change in here. So you can change the colors. You can change anything you want. Um, but when it comes to like different things, like when your connection is, right? So I want my GUI to come up and have my default. Like if I run this right now, let me just show you if I run this right now it's gonna pop up and it's gonna have a, a default whatever they used for their simple uh, il illustration so 192 168 115 now, now you can change your slot number you can change all this 
but again I want to have it come up to my exact property so what I'm saying is if I know my project file is 192.168.5 and it's in slot 0 I want this actually to pull up that data so how do I do that I'm gonna come right here to this section and I want to say change this to 5 and I'm gonna change that to slot 0 now I'm also going to change the tags in this reading so I currently want to read I'm going to get this tag for right here I'm going to grab this and then I'm going to come back over here I'm going to paste this in here so I'll come in here paste that in there and then let's get another one we'll come down here and get another one of these this will be the syrup tank and that'll be the basically the weight of that and then we'll come in here and paste that in there as well because they just put in some, what they did is they put in some raw data that they they tested with and what you're doing now is you're just putting in now you can change this data in the GUI itself but I like to kind of start out with uh, something that's you know right at what I'm doing right so just to kind of give you a heads up of why we're doing what we're doing right so copy paste Come over here we'll do this come over here paste that in there and then again you can call out different things like dent dot whatever if you want to um, in our case we're just going to do simple tags and then we'll go to our mixing tank our mixing tank currently has or let's do actual cooling temperature let's get that come over here and let's paste that last one in there and this just gives you examples of what you can and can't do, right? Or would you, what it recommends you do. Um, okay, so now that we have all this in here, we're gonna go ahead and start this up. And what this should do is this should automatically connect because it's it already has my IP address in here. It's already shown connected on the bottom. And if I wanna start monitoring these tags, I can just hit press and it starts monitoring. And it should gives me the value of each one of these. So again, this does kind of change from, from periodic time because it depends on when you load it or when you get the PyLogix from um, the GitHub because GitHub, all, they're always trying to evolve and get better and again like that. So you can also browse your device and what this does is it shows you the product name, shows you the IP address, shows you everything about it. Okay, so it comes down here and shows you this. You can get all the tags from that specific. Um, so you can then save all the tags to a list and then get all the tags and they saved it to a list. Again, you can stop the update, change these as you want. Like we can come in here and change one of these uh, tags if we wanted to. But this is a really, really good example of just something you can do inside of um, just running a, a simple GUI inside of you know PyLogix. PyLogix is a very, very strong tool set. And to prove that out, again, uh, right here is all the list of examples. If you just wanted to get all the examples, you can choose. This is every bit of examples I have in my actual uh, folder right now. But again, it's easier just to, to zip it if you um, are downloaded to zip and unzip it and then load it into your, if you have an offline copy, um, then you can just, you know, import it like that. Or if you have, if you're able to connect to the internet on your computer that has that is running the actual software, then um, you can go ahead, and I can on my, my VM, I just choose not to because of the simple fact of, well, I'm connected to uh, a uh, through a NAT, so a network translation table. So what I'm doing is I'm, um, I could have actually just did pip install, and just like you could do a pip install, and you can always check your version, is open up uh, Python and check your version just like that. And I can still do that, right? I can still go in and check my, come in here to this and open up Python or open up CMD, CMD and open this up. And then again, you come in here, Python, start Python, and then do exactly as they say. You come over here and you would, at this point, you would import PyLogix and then you would come in here and copy this. So we'll do that, come over here and we'll say, we'll import pi 
logics and then we'll paste our version in there and we get our version and that is our version so that's the current version of PyLogix we're currently running and again that's checked with uh, your CMD your standard CMD that you currently have now um, again you can change the colors of this stuff too if you wanted to uh, I believe you can come out here to the colors um, anywhere that it has a, a simple color like the background right here uh, what we can do is we can search that and anywhere it says black we can change um, like if you wanted the black to be gray uh, you can just put in gray and then gray right here gray and then check again <coughs> for more instances of this all right and have the whole thing look as a different color now this is a font so I don't know if the font should matter um, but you know you can actually come down here and check the the way things look after you do this All right <clears throat> so I'm just showing you how to change some different stuff and just try to get it more customized to you I mean and, and again this is just one implementation of different things you can do running with this software and let's change this change this one change this one and I'll tell you what, let's see what that looks like. Let's run it, see what that looks like. And we have changed the background from now to gray to that. And now if we monitor, we'll see all that. If we come up here, we hit discover, we're gonna set all, all of our data. And we can always uh, check all of our tags just like this. If you wanted to load in one of these tags, you can just copy one of these tags right here. Uh, again, real simple, real easy tool to use but a very, a very effective tool. But again, when it comes to PyLogix, you have a very uh, vast uh, in thing that you can use. And again, that's going down using the samples that they currently have. This is a simple GUI um, that you can use. Um, again, that's a real, real simple one. Um, obviously too, um, you can come in here and look at how to write arrays, how to read, how to look at uh, controller properties, controller tags, um, each one of these has their own different thing. You can open this up in either Studio uh, or Visual Studio or in Python yourself. Or if you have another IDE you can use, um, again, what, whatever you choose to use. I mean, but again, this shows you prime examples of how to use the software. So again, I just want to show you another quick way to read data from uh, with Python using another tool, which is PyLogix. Again, you can easily find that on GitHub. Just Google PyLogix, and you can find that on GitHub and practice yourself. Install, um, what I did on my local computer is I installed a manual version or a manual install of um, Visual Studio online. And I just came down here and made that manual install and then came down here and, and set it up that way. So I just wanted to show you a real quick, easy way to do that. And hopefully that was helpful and we'll see you guys on the next one.